Aloha, everybody. My name is Frank DeLima. My full name is Frank Wilcox Napua Ke Kaulike DeLima Jr. How about another big hand for me, please? Do I look pure Portuguese? I'm not. I'm Irish, Scotch, English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Chinese, and Hawaiian. But the reason why people think I'm pure Portuguese is because I like to tell a lot of Portuguese jokes. And so I'm going to tell one now. Mary went to go visit her sister Matilda in Makawao. And over there, get big pastures. Okay, every neighbor has a big pasture. And so Mary went into the house. And uh, she wanted to see the backyard. So she went back in the backyard and she's looking at the beautiful view. And then the corner of her eye caught the next door neighbor. He was rowing in a boat in the middle of the pasture. And so Mary gets all excited. And she turns to him and says, you know, it's Portuguese like you that make us Portuguese look stupid. If I could swim, I'd go over there and slap your head. <laughs> anyway, now, uh, being in entertainment now for 40 years, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you very much. It took you a while, but thank you. And uh, so, through the years, I've entertained a lot in Waikiki. But, oh my goodness. You know, I do have a bad reputation because I closed almost every showroom in Waikiki. <laughs> what happened was when I started in my career, I was at the Club 400, and then that place closed. And then I went on to the noodle shop. I was there for, oh, I don't know how many years, from 77 to 89. How many of you seen me at the noodle shop? <laughs> yeah, great. And then um, what happened was a company bought the hotel, so that room closed. So then we went to the Queen Kapiolani Hotel. And I was there for a few years, and then the Persian Gulf War broke out, so nobody coming, that room closed. So then I went on to the Polynesian Palace, and we were doing really good. And then uh, economy got bad, and that room closed. So I went across the street to the Hula Hut. And I was there six months, and they broke down the building. So now I'm into demolition, ladies and gentlemen. So after that happened, I said, what am I going to do? And I guess I got to go collect unemployment because I can't go back to the showrooms because they're all closed. So I went to unemployment. And uh, I was waiting in line. And my, the person to help me was a Japanese man, but... David Koikawa, my keyboard player, he was in another line and he had a Portuguese lady. That's danger already. <laughs> he goes up to her and, and she says, is that Frank de Lima? <laughs> and he says, uh, yes. <gasps> Poor thing, he must be so embarrassed, gotta collect unemployment. <laughs> I knew that that night, all of Punch Bowl heard I was collecting unemployment. <laughs> Telegraph, telephone, and teleportagi. <laughs> anyway, well, I don't know it was three months that I collected unemployment, and I went back to work at the captain's table. And uh, I was there for like three years. And then the Japan economy got terrible, and uh, so the Japanese had to walk away from that building. So the bank took over, the showroom closed. <laughs> So there we go, it's just continuing. So after that, I said, oh, where can I go? There's no more showrooms in Waikiki. Pagoda! <laughs> so I came to the pagoda and I stepped into the food and beverage office and uh, the food and beverage manager took one look at me and said, no, come here, we don't like clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to my name, Napua uh, Ke Kaulike. In my years in Waikiki, I, um, uh, tourists used to come up to me and say, Mr. DeLima, you have such a beautiful sounding Hawaiian name. And I say, well, thank you. I am proud of my Hawaiian name. And uh, they say, uh, and it's a long name too. And I say, well, it's not that long. Hawaiians, when they give people or things names, 
They give them names a mile long. Names like Meke aloha mai kai po mehana no ho ivai ana ole ke iala oko pukalani ya 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 oi hula halau. They only have 12 letters in their alphabet and they give names that long. Chinese, on the other hand, have thousands of characters in the alphabet and they only give one syllable name to each person Wong. So tight, just one syllable per person. We gotta need Chinese in here. I need one Chinese man. Where are you? Chinese lady, Chinese man, where are you? Way back there? Where, 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 where? What's your last name, sir? Ow! Oh, thank you very much. I rest my case. And then uh, we got oh, Filipinos. Where are you? <laughs> Filipinos. In Waipahu, in old Waipahu, the manong sleep to na. In Waipahu, in old Waipahu, the manong sleep to na. Ay! E manong dito e. My doggy, don't bark my doggy. The man no sleep tonight. Hush my doggy, don't bark my doggy, or you'll be dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Filipinos love the letter A. They cram as many A's as possible into one name. Names like Quinsaat, Kabakungan, Makadangdang. <laughs> Japanese are very precise, very neat. Their names are like squares with four sides. <laughs> Ariyoshi, Watanabe, Hanabusa, Hanakuso, Hanabata. What's your last name, sir? Uetake. Very good. You make it, brother. You're in the square. <laughs> Koreans. You have another one? What is the name? Furoyama. Uroyama. Furoyama. <laughs> I don't know, Yama. <laughs> That's a good one. I never heard that last name before. Mountain. mountain. What kind of mountain? Black. Black mountain. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy, she looks Japanese, but I swear she get Portuguese in her. Man. <laughs> Where you was born? Why, Mom? Oh. <laughs> This is not going anywhere, boy. Everything I've, I, every stereotype is out the window right now. Anyway, then we got Koreans. Koreans have an ancient style of naming their children. What they do is they get tiles like dominoes and they carve one syllable name on each tile. Names like G, Te, Song, Moon. And then they turn the tile upside down on the table. And when the baby is born, they mix them up like mahjong and they pick three tiles, and that's the name of the kid. G, Young, Cho, Te, Wook, Ho, Song, Song, Blue, Kim, Chi, Tu, Buy, Me, Drink. Call the cab and we'll come get you. Call the cab, we're tried and true. Call the cab for two, two, two. Call the cab, we're there for you for two, 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 two. Call the cab. We're at your side and we provide. All right, with pride, the island wide. This cab can be your guide. 
Let's go, Kimo Sabe. Who was that mess man? People ask me when, uh, when I was a kid, was I planning to be a comedian? And I told them, no, actually, I'm um, being very, you know, my family is strong Catholic family. And uh, so we went to Catholic school, all of us, my three sisters, my brother, and myself. And uh, so, <laughs> so at any rate, we went to Catholic school. And you know, when you go to Catholic school, the nuns telling the, the boys, you should start thinking about going to the seminary. Just try. Many are called, few are chosen. You go over there, you try. If you cannot, cannot. Can, can. So, well, they didn't actually say that, but. <laughs> Anyway, so I took the test in eighth grade, but I never make them because I have this gift of daydreaming. And <laughs> so my grades wasn't that good. But I tried, and I never, I never make the test, so I went to Damien High School. And <laughs> not that they take stupid people, okay? <laughs> At any rate, the, I never forget the first day I walked into class, Brother Rocks was forming a new football team. It was only, it was a brand new school. And uh, he sees this Portuguese Hawaiian kid coming in the classroom, 5'11", 190 pounds, and he says, you're playing football. Oh, I was so happy. I went home, I told my mom, she said, no, you cannot play. <laughs> and I don't blame her because I had a hard time with sports. My dad was very athletic. He took me to PAL, up, uh, Booth Park, okay, the baseball. Took me up there, and I was doing the batting, you know, to learning how to bat, and oh man, the pitcher was from Papakolea, 12 years old. <laughs> and he don't know how to pitch. I got whacked in the head, I knock out, I never like play baseball anymore, man. <laughs> Then when I was 10, you know, nowadays kids, yeah, they, they, um, they take a while before they learn how, you know, while they're learning to swim. They put the floater belt, they teach them this, then they teach them that. You know, I went swimming lessons at Booth Park and they took us to the natatorium and they threw us in. <laughs> and the natatorium is dark, you cannot see nothing in there, man. <laughs> And I just had finished watching The Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> My imagination went crazy. That's like tonight when I was looking at that. I saw these creatures inside the like, No, I don't like, I don't like. Oh, I never shut up. I almost drowned at the natatorium. <laughs> and then, seventh grade, basketball. My dad was at every practice, and I did really good. But the first game, not even five minutes in the game, I come down, down from the basket, and my foot goes like that, and boom, the other guy stepped right on top. Broke the ankle, no can play for the rest of the season. So when I told my mom I like to play football, she said, no, you got knocked out, you almost drowned, you broke your ankle, you're gonna die, you play football. <laughs> so I became cheerleader. Not that kind cheerleader, okay? <laughs> Damien High School was the first school in Hawaii to have a pep squad, and now all the schools in Hawaii have, and it's made up of guys and girls, and I never forget when we first put that pep squad together, we had such a good time. The girls came from St. Francis and Star of the Sea, eight girls, eight guys from Damien, and we built human pyramids, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we were the first in Hawaii to do that. And we get the girls and they climb up on top of us and, and that was better than football, man. <laughs> but even with those natural distractions, <laughs> in senior year, I, uh, I still felt I should try one more time. And the brothers were great at Damien to help guys get their grades up. And so in senior year, I made it to the seminary. I was there for eight years. The first four years here in Hawaii, and then I went up to the mainland. Never been off this island before. Oh, I was so homesick, arriving in San Francisco in the fall. Foggy, cold, dark. First day at the seminary. Oh, I'm over there waiting to go to dinner. We go to dinner. The nuns are French-Canadian. They make cow tongue. 
that's our meal, cow tongue. You know, a big slab of meat in, the, in a platter with a line in the middle and bumps on top, ladies and gentlemen. I told my friend, I can't eat that. They look like mine, but 10 times bigger. <laughs> and artichoke. When I was growing up, anybody my age or older knows there was no such thing as artichoke in Hawaii. <laughs> I saw this thing on the plate and I said, I told my friend, how come the hell you eat the top of the pineapple? How do you eat that? <laughs> you know, I really, I, I made it uh, almost to an ordination, but, um, and I remember that one summer before that final year where I was working on my theology paper, my master's, <clears throat> I came home and I was, everything was theology, Bible and so forth, and I was up in Paoa, and uh, at our house in Paoa, and uh, Jehovah's Witness was on our street, and uh, I knew they were because I could hear the door slamming as they're getting closer and closer. <laughs> invited them into my house and I sat and talked Bible but at one point one of them says Adam and Eve is Filipino I told him what I said you show me where in the Bible it says that they said right there when the snake went they turn around look. you know ladies and gentlemen I was thinking about that and I, I wish that Adam and Eve were Filipino because then we would not have original sin and we would still be in the garden of paradise because they would have eaten the snake, not the apple. <laughs> Pardon me, bra. This is for two-two-two-two-two-two. We need a cab right away. We like a haul today. It's such a breeze. To call for two to two to two to at any time of the day, and you'll be soon on your way. Nothing could be finer, right across the Aina. Ring ring, four to two to two to two, ring ring, four to two to two to two, ring ring, four to two to two to two. So I was uh, going to go record at David's house uh, in Kailua, and uh, this is a story. Uh, I call it my ghost story. And uh, so I was there recording. When I went over to Kailua, it was, it was a beautiful day. But I had made arrangement to meet my guitar player, Bobby Nishida, at Shinshote, a Japanese restaurant in the Nu'uanu Square. And uh, so I was doing my recording and I was done. And when I got in the car and started driving up the Pali, the storm came in. And it was really thunder and lightning. And I went up the, up the, uh, you know, up the road, almost to the, to the tunnels. And my car stalls. Nothing. So I had to push the brake. And that was it. And it was foggy up there, Polly, you know? And never have lights. Somebody went cut the cup of wire and steal them, I think. <laughs> So I'm standing on, uh, outside of the car and I'm saying my prayers and a car pulls up nice and slow and stops. So I say, oh, a miracle. So I jump in the back seat. The car starts to move very slowly. And after a while, I'm looking because it's foggy, right? And I'm looking, I see through the fog, nobody. There was nobody in the front seat. Oh my God, I said I'm in a ghost car. Because <laughs> you know, Polly get all the superstitions and everything else. Oh, so I made it out of the tunnels and the car kept moving slowly, but it kept going down. I said, oh no, we're going to die. I'm going to crash into the tree. This car had no driver. Holy moly, the car keeps going. And it, just about making the turn, and a shadow came in, and the car started to turn. And then when it made the turn, then it, it, the shadow went out. And it kept doing that at every turn. 
I got so frightened, I couldn't handle it anymore. I jumped out of the car, ran down the rest of Pali Highway, down Nu'uanu, ran into Shinshote, met with Bobby, told him exactly what happened. He was going, no way. And everybody in the place started to talk about it. About 15 minutes later, these two big Hawaiian guys come inside. One of them sees me and he tells his friend, hey, Moke, that's the guy when jumped in our car when was pushing him in the rain. <laughs> Aloha, may I help you? Would you be so kind as to call the cab? Certainly. For whom? For Tutu. 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 And the number? For Tutu. 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 Yeah, and the number? For Tutu. 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 Oh my, give me the phone. It's really very simple. For Tutu. 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 The cab already. And we got service island wide. We get 10,000 men still yet And we got windy escape you bad We get Vienna, Pachara, Gomes and Olivera Yeah, 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 yeah Pumpkin, beans and gravy Join the Portuguese Navy Fight, fight, fight for Portugal Beans, beans and musical fruit The more you eat, the more you toot The more you toot, the better you feel So let's have beans at every meal Pocket beans and gravy, join the Portuguese Navy. Fight, fight, fight for Portugal. Viva la Portugal! Thank you, thank you so much. So happy to be here. My name is Auntie Mary Tunta. Say good morning, Auntie Mary. Good morning, Auntie Mary. Thank you very much. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I always enjoy when my nephew Frank De Lima invites me to his show. And I always want to show off my talent. Portuguese people are very, very talented people. And so I would like to show off my talent of being a psychic. I am a psychic. Most Portuguese women are. And so let us proceed. I need my blindfold. <laughs> Which way are you going? Okay. Come around this way. Keep coming. Okay. Keep, oh, I just broke one. Why are we having such a long, hard time with this? Okay, keep going round and round. Because I want to make them teeth. Because this is from Walmart, only one ply. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I feel that I'm ready. I cannot see nothing. I cannot see how many fingers I'm holding in the front of me right now. <laughs> Auntie Mary is a psychic, so Auntie, I'm going to go to someone and you tell me if uh, this person is male or female. Male or female? Mm. I would say a female. Yes! Oh. Fantastic, fantastic! I Andy. tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is so beautiful. Well, uh, another question. Oh. What is her ethnicity? I would think Japanese. Are you Japanese? No. <laughs> she looks. Yes, yeah, she's yeah. Japanese. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure she's Japanese. What okay. Is, what why, is why does she look? What does she look like? Describe me to her. She get glasses. She get glasses. Yes, yes. She's got glasses. She get glasses, and her eyes go slant a little bit. <laughs> yes. Okay. Then what she's is... Japanese. Well, what is her name then? Her name? Well, give. Uh, um, let's see. Would it be? Uh, uh, let's see. I gotta think. Kimiko. Sachiko. Haruko. Sushiko. <laughs> Tomoboko. <laughs> Which one is it? What is your name? Hilda. <laughs> Hilda. <laughs> well, she just was born here, that's why. I'm going to go to someone else now, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry, Auntie Mary. I am standing <laughs> next to a person, male or female. Um, 
Oh, I don't know now. Oh. The other one might shake me up a little bit. I'd say a female. Yes, yes, oh, okay, okay, okay. Very good. Now tell me, oh, I'm so what is the, what's the color of her hair? Um, That's right, because I'm Portuguese. Uh -uh. <laughs> we didn't ask you to talk. <laughs> Typical. You get two Portuguese in a room and they try to beat each other. Okay, I think that she is a uh, brunette. Oh no, she's a beautiful blonde. Check the roots. <laughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I mean, life is so loaded with that kind of stuff. It's unbelievable, man. And I do same things, you know, when I'm not on stage, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I do. And you can ask my friends, my family, oh, a lot of baboos things that I do. But, you know, that's all part of life. And as comedians, we just let everybody know, that's all. <laughs> I also like to sing, and I did the Filipino Christmas, and um, I did um, a lot of other songs, parodies in my career. The Filipino Christmas came from the fact that when I was growing up, I loved imitating languages. Okay, so even though I wasn't planning to be a comedian, I was putting together stuff already. And uh, like, for example, my Chinese neighbor, Mrs. Lee, she was my babysitter. From three years old to five years old, Mrs. Lee used to babysit me. And she used to talk to her aunt every day, five days a week. Uh, for three years, I heard, <laughs> I can speak like that for one hour today and not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> If any Chinese person ever challenged me and said, Delima, you don't know what you're talking about, I say, hey, there's 856 dialects in China. I'm speaking the one you don't know. <laughs> ha! Hey, Tutu, why so happy? Cab bucks from the cab. Cab what? Cab bucks. Reusable prepaid cards you can use instead of cash when you ride the cab. It's smart and so convenient. Just call the cab at 422222. Cab bucks are great for senior students, all kind of people, and for tutus too. And they make great gifts. Cab bucks make you want to go, yeah! Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, I also am an entrepreneur. Okay? Entrepreneur. That means that I. No, it's not for the garden. Okay? <laughs> Entrepreneur, that's uh, when you business, you make the only kind of business. Chinese are good at that. I got into the tour business, okay? And um, you know that the tour business is unbelievable. I mean, $500 just for the Circle Island tour, okay? Well, my tour company, it's gonna incorporate flying to the neighbor island and the Circle Island tour. And the Luau, all for four ninety nine, four dollar ninety nine cents. But okay, so we're gonna show you exactly how good this tour is. But I'm gonna need a Chinese person to come up and help me. I need an assistant. Uh, oh, we got somebody pointing right there. You sir, you look okay. Yeah, very good. Come up here. Oh yeah, look those tiny eyes. Very good. Ooh, that's a big bug, yeah? Okay, so while he's making his way up here, Fanny, Fanny! Lai, 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 hold on, hai, 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 hai. Oh, he understands Chinese? Really good. Okay, now all you have to do is assist me, okay? Alright, first of all, what is your name? Maka. Maka! <laughs> I'll give you a Chinese name. You know my Chinese name? Okay, Wing Fat. That's your name, Wing Fat. <laughs> all right. Now, Wing Fat, first of all, uh, you have to stand this side. Because uh, this is the only way I can do the tour. <laughs> all right. So, now we're going to start from the very beginning, the presentation of the lake. Tropical Tight Toys. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We are now going to get into the twally. So, get in the twally. Okay. Ring the bell. Okay. I think you got a good timing with the bell. Okay. okay, now. Okay, our first stop is we're going to go to, uh, let's see, blow hole. Okay, blow hole. So here we go. Blow hole. <laughs> oh, it's windy today. Windy. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to go to uh, Sandy Beach. Oh, you duck, eh? You duck. You must be Chinese. I duck. Now we're gonna go to uh, go around. We're gonna go to um, Waimanalo. Duck. <laughs> okay. Now we're going up the Pali to the Pali Lookout. Whoo! The windy up here. Windy, 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 windy. windy. Okay. Okay. Then now we're gonna go back down the Pali, and we're gonna go to Pearl Harbor. Okay, now we're gonna go on to Jermaine's Luau. Hey, first of all, we like to have you blow the conch shell. The other way. No, no, better not. You better fake it because uh, somebody else went blow them yesterday. Use your. your, your. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna do the luau, scratch and sniff luau. Okay, yeah, scratch and sniff. Ah! Now we just do some Hawaiian, Hawaiian music. Tahoe, la i tahoe, i wai la. The cab is privileged to give you transportation all over Oahu. We can get you wherever you like go, fast, safe, and no hassle. If you drink and get all buzz up, call the cab and we can be a designated driver. So remember, if you need a cab, call 4 Tutu! 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 We do! <laughs> I'm gonna need another contestant. And I heard, uh, Baka, you know anybody around here that uh, can come up and uh, do uh, anything? <laughs> your dad. Oh, okay, bring up your dad. <laughs> oh, he look more Chinese. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you now. Because another thing I wanted to get involved with and to be big business is game show. How many of you know of the Would You Like to Be a Millionaire game show? <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Okay, very good. Well, I am doing the Pakistan. style. Would you like to be a five dollar air? <laughs> and I welcome our contestant. Please come here. Take the mic over that side. All right, and uh, what is your name? Kealoha. Kealoha. Okay, nice to meet you, Kealoha. We're going to do uh, simple rules. I'm going to give you a question, and I'll give you four choices. A, B, C, D. With those letters is a phrase or a word. When you answer the question, 
You have to answer the phrase, the, excuse me, the letter first and the word or phrase. You cannot just say A. You have to say the whole thing. Your son understand. I don't know how come you don't. Okay, okay, whatever. Can I say that? No, 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 no. I asked you if you understand, so that's all right. Forget it. All right. Now, um, we're going to give you the question. So, first, let's begin. You're going to have a chance to win $5. And we have four questions. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Would You Like to Be a $5? Question number one. What color is the red flag of China? Don't rush into it. Somebody lost the other day. Think. What is your answer? Oh, I have to give you the choices. <laughs> Shut up, and it's made 65. I'm all already. You ain't perfect either. Okay, what color is the red flag of China? A, pink. B, purple. C, fuchsia. D, red. D, red. You win one dollar! <laughs> Question number two. What role is very popular among Chinese people? A. California roll. B. Butter roll. C. Jelly roll. D. Spling roll. Uh oh, look like nobody home in those eyes. I think we're going to have to give you a lifeline. We'll give you 50-50. I'll take away A and C and give you the choice between B and D. So, what role is very popular among Chinese people? B, butter roll or D, spilling roll? It's got to be D, spilling roll. <laughs> no make fun of my accent. <laughs> you win two dollars. <laughs> Question number three. The newly elected leader of Taiwan is A, ping pong. B. Wong Dong. C. Sing a song. D. Sing Tao. Oh, still nobody home. Okay, we're going to have the audience help you out with your second lifeline. That means you only get one more lifeline left. Audience, on applause only. The newly elected leader of Taiwan is A. Ping Pong. B. Wong Dong. C. Sing a song. Only a few people, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> D. Sing Tao. What is your answer? I say D. Sing Tao. You win three dollars. <laughs> Question number four. If you go to a Chinese restaurant, you would order a sukiyaki. B. Big Mac. C. Cheese and Chadada. D. Mugu Gai Pan. I know it's all about the food. It's all about the food. Remember, you gotta answer the letter and the answer. I think you better call a friend and use your last lifeline. Who would your friend be? Uh, my wife, Sherilyn. <laughs> okay, Sherilyn. We are calling Sherilyn. Hello. Hello. What a sweet little verse. What is my name? Hello, is this Sherilyn? Yes, it is. Okay, Sherilyn. Um, 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 I'm going to ask you a question. Your husband is here at a game show. I don't know if you, he, you know he's coming to the game show. Win. He's going to win $5 if, he, if you help him out with this. Okay? That should pay for uh, maybe... Uh, this, uh, not even, 
Uh, yeah, maybe the type two. Yeah, that's good. Right. Now, I'm going to ask you the question, and I'll give you four choices: A, B, C, D. I have a letter. I'm, I'm sorry, a phrase or a word next to the letter. Please answer the letter and the phrase or word. If you go to a Chinese restaurant, you would order A, sukiyaki. B, Big Mac. C, cheese and salad. D. What is your answer to help your husband? <laughs> Sorry, you're on your own, brother. It's gotta be B, Big Mac. You win $5! Congratulations! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for Ke Aloha. I ride the cab. Loose to buy cha siu. I ride the cab to Makapu. I call the cab to shop for shoes. At Kum Speedy 222. And if you drink, the cab's for you. It's for me. It's for you. It's for 222. 22. The cab accepts all major credit cards and cab bucks the cab's prepaid taxi card. My neighbor next door, they watch Japanese samurai movies on Sunday afternoon. And we were there every Sunday afternoon, man. But one Sunday, they preempted the movie for this singing contest. And had these old Japanese men singing in an old style called Nani Wabushi. I didn't know that then, but later on I, I realized the name of it and so forth. I learned a lot about Japanese singing. But back then, First time I saw it, what the is it? I couldn't wait to go home and practice in front of a mirror. Yeah, and I, I did good, you know. Yeah, I practiced and then I started the whole routine about the Japanese singing man. And when I started in my career, uh, I, after work, one day at the noodle shop, my friend said, let's go see this Japanese singer. And so we went to this uh, club called Koisan, and she called me up on stage, I did my routine, I did a, uh, uh, and then she said, you know what, you clown around, but you can sing Japanese. I'm going to teach you. And so she did. And in, the, in a few years after that, I started going to the Kohaku Tadasing, which is a Japanese song contest, a singing contest, all, the, all the Japanese people. I was the only non-Japanese there. And I became captain of the men's team. <laughs> One party captain of the men's team. <laughs>
And if you don't mind, I'd like to show off my Japanese singing for real, right now. I'm talking about. It's amazing how different languages have, you know. Ochi chi hoshi ga aru kono ko ga kawaii. Komori uta nado ni ga tenya. That's Filipino. <laughs> it's Hitotsu, not Ototsu. Hitotsu ki Aloha, and thank you for calling the cab. Is this a grandma cab? Grandma cab? Well, your number says it three times, 422222. No, ma'am, the number is 422222. And I'm 1222. And we're the largest taxi company in Hawaii. Well, I'm kind of petite. And the cab is Oahu's only taxi company with service island-wide. Oh, how convenient in case I forget where I live. So what's the number again? No forget, 4 cab cab. I prefer 422222. 4 cab cab. 4 cab cab. I love traveling. My manager, Mili Fujinaga, speaks fluent Japanese, um, uh, made it possible for us to go to Japan. Okay? And so we used to go on vacation in Japan a lot. And I loved samurai movies from when I was, from when I was a, a, a kid. And uh, samurai movies were just good fun, like Kaze Kozo, Oko Hashizo, Hakaba Doji. Yeah. Remember Kaze Kozo? How many of you remember Kaze Kozo? You all look like you're old enough to... I remember the theme song, but I don't remember the words, so I make them my own. Well, one Sunday afternoon, okay, all of kids used to uh, gather in front of the, the TV and watch Kaze Kozo. 
And uh, but one Sunday afternoon, they um, preempted it for Nani Wabushi singing contest. What does he say? Oh, I saw that. I couldn't wait to go home and practice in front of the mirror. <laughs> anyway, I got so into Japanese culture. And, um, and so what happened was, one of the trips, I told my manager, I would like to go to a samurai village in Japan that looks just like the movies. She found one outside of Sapporo in Hokkaido Island. And uh, it was really... Typical, awesome. Two-story motel is where we stayed. And so we walked into the room and it was tatami mat and three zabuton. That's it. I asked, where the toilet? They said, down the, down the hall. I said, where the shower? They said, outside with all the other people. You take a bath together outside. I said, forget it. I don't like nobody looking at me. So I waited till 3 o'clock in the morning. And then I went to the closet to get a robe that they said would be in their yukata. But it's made for them. I put it on the sleeves, it was only to the armpit. And then I had to close it, so I had to close the bottom, close the top. And I wear a slipper, but the slipper only fit my big toe. So I'm walking through the lobby like this. I make it to the, to the bathhouse. I derobe and then I look inside the bathhouse and it's a round room with the with the hot spring water right in the middle. And so I'm looking and for shower heads. But there are no shower heads. Water faucets coming out of the wall three feet above the ground. With one stool only this high in front of each. Okay? This round. The bucket only this big. The cloth only that big. I thought I was in Lilliput. So I proceed, dip dab, dip dab, trying to wash my body. Just then, when old man, Oji Chang, comes in, three o'clock in the morning, I forgot that old people get up early all over the world. And there's 17 water faucets, he sits right next to me. He has the same size washcloth, and he's doing this. <laughs> and I'm like a baboose, dip dab, dip dab, dip dab. He's finished washing himself, and I thought he left. But then I hear giggling. He's in the middle, in the hot tub, and he must be looking straight at me, straight at my back. I guess you would giggle too if you saw a hippopotamus on a spool. My okole hanging all around the school. And then I had to wash over there. And I never like, you know, just lift up and wash. So I leaned back, went to the front. When I leaned back, the back two legs of the stool broke. Bang! Right on my back. The guy was hysterical already. But as Portuguese are proud people, I stood up like nothing happened. I went and got two stools, one for each cheek, sat back down. Then it was my turn to go into the hot spring. Now when the Japanese man went in, no sound, no noise. When I went in, half the water went out and the guy came up like one buoy bobbing back and forth. He was crawling out of there, laughing so hard. But at least I had the place to myself. So I'm enjoying, okay? And just then, a million Japanese kids come in on a school tour. And they surround the hot tub and all looking at me. <laughs> this big, big man. I felt like I was at Sea Life Park. <laughs> and one of the kids says, Yaki Buddha, Yaki Buddha. <laughs> I wanted to slap him, man. For taxi transportation to the South Side, Hard Rock Cafe in Waikiki. To the East Side, Bona Brewing Company, the home of Liquid Aloha. To the North Side. Haliva Joe's A Taste of Paradise To the West Side T-Spot Hideaway To Mauka To Makai Call 422-2222 Go go ahead Emma Mauka Makai Too many signs Mauka Pia the eye If you need a cab Just right for you Just dial 422-222 You know as a kid I was
was uh, mimicking, and then before you know it, I'm, I'm doing really good stuff with uh, all that make-believe and imitation. Tata across the street. That's how I did the Filipino Christmas Carol. I was listening on uh, the radio, and, and when, when I started my career, driving around, and I heard, and so I said, yeah, what can I put in there? You know, I can, that song is happy song, Christmas song. I can ruin that one, you know? <laughs> I'm not going to touch Oh Holy Night or whatever else, but that one I can play with, you know. So what I did is I, um, I, I put some pidgin English where I know never work, and I tried the Chinese never work. I tried Japanese never work, but the Filipino just happened to fit perfect. Makanang nang saloyot, you know, and so I, I did that, and then, um, and that was one of my biggest songs for Christmas time. Well, I went to the Philippines, because in that song there's balut, balut, balut ni toy, right? And I have never wanted to try balut. Tata used to, to cook for us when we used to be kids, you know, he'd call us over for desserts like koskaron, peche, peche, badoya, and, and uh, the pancit, and adobo, and dring, dring, and darang, darang, you know, all the... <laughs> But we never touched the balut. And even as growing up, you know, we go visit friends in Waipahu, we go to the 7-Eleven, get balot on the counter, you know, and, I, and no, I don't like touch. Well, Panda Travel called me two years ago, would you like to take a group to Philippines? I said, oh yeah, free? I'm like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> so, I, I went, 60 people went along. Hawaiian area makes that flight now. And, uh, I went to the shopping center and I couldn't believe it. They have Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell, but every one of those places had balut on the menu. <laughs> I mean, you go to McDonald's, you expect McMuffin, not McBalut, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I, I said, I got to, I've traveled all this way, it's about time I try balut. So I bought one. And I crack them open, the bugger gray, and not from the show you ran. <laughs> oh, I said, I gotta do it. So I went, like that, and I could feel the beak going down my throat. <laughs> so I told my Filipino friend that, he said, stupid, you're supposed to chew first. <laughs> Korean neighbor down the street, Mrs. Kim, she had a garden, see, and she prized that garden. So us kids used to play football on the street, but we play up the street. But one day I missed the pass, went in her garden. So I would sneak, and I almost got my, my hands on the ball, and I heard, Somebody watch me! Mongoose was in the plants, man. <laughs> but I, I found out that the in Koreans, when they get excited, you know, different dialects, of course, but when they, some of them get excited, <laughs> come out. <laughs> but you know, you can become a big singing star in Korea if you know these little things. <laughs> I'm the cab driver. Driver. Give me a call. Call him up. Whenever you need a ride, just call me up. Just call him. Here's the number. Number. Give me a call. Call him up. Whenever you need the 
cab, just call me up. Four two 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 two. Four two 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 two. Four two 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 two. And um, the most recent commercial, I think you rem you can you see it on TV, uh, dressed as a tutu. I think that would be one of my most recent projects. Yes, if you need a cab, you call. Very good. You know, I was convinced that everybody knows that number four two 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 two, but I was proven wrong. I walked into Zippy's. The place was packed. And had these two old Japanese men sitting there drinking their coffee, one of them sees me. He makes such a big ruckus that the whole place quiets down. And he goes, Frank de Lima! Five, tree tree, tree tree, tree tree! <laughs> the place cracked up laughing. I mean, everybody laughed so hard, I was laughing. <laughs> But, you know, that's nothing. Then, when things quieted down, his friend was standing there looking at his friend, and he turned to me and said, Frank de Lima, I apologize for this baboos over here. <laughs> and he turns to his friend, he says, Masa, that's wrong. It's 844444. <laughs> You know, I shouldn't tease people with bald head because look at me, man, I'm, I tell you. But you know, I believe now, God takes good care of us. He closes one door, He opens another. As the hair is falling off my head, it's growing on my back. <laughs> and when I'm completely bald, I take the hair from my back and comb all over. Have something new from the cab. Cab Bucks, a prepaid reusable card that you can use instead of cash when you ride the cab. A great gift for everyone, and you can reload online over the phone or in person. Cab Bucks, a four two 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 two. Um, I did this song on the tsunami, and uh, it was because you know, remember that for, for with it's six o'clock in the morning. Oh, oh, you know. I spoke are very talented people and you know we realize that when electricity goes out the civil defense sirens don't work and so we're sick and tired of, of, of worrying about that so we got together and we made a list of all the Portuguese people that live in the state and we assigned each one to a neighborhood so that in case a tidal wave or a hurricane comes in our direction, we, the Portuguese, will be there for you. We will give you ample time to seek safety. six o'clock in the morning that's so scary you know you don't want to hear that at six in the morning so we all turn the TV on and we're watching the newscasters for four and a half hours we're watching nothing <laughs> but they're doing their part they are very very informative as far as you know past things and and how long it's going to take and when it's going to happen and the camera goes to Hilo Bay every half hour and you know <laughs> But you know, at least we, we have comfort that somebody is taking care of us. So we glued to that TV, you know. But at 11.18, <laughs> I forget what station I was watching, but the guy says, oh, never come yet, but don't come. It's <laughs> so we still watch. 11.20, nothing. 11.22, the same, the same guy goes, look, 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 the rock. <laughs> the rock was not there. Not a rock there, that means the water went out. That means the water won't come back in. Well, three inches. All out for nothing.
for Tutu Tutu Tutu. Aloha, the cab. This is Tutu. Is this for Tutu Tutu Tutu? Yes, Tutu. This is the cab. I hear you guys get a good Portuguese soup. You know, GPS? Actually, GPS stands for Global Positioning System. When you call the cab, the computer in our dispatch center contacts a satellite that will locate the cab nearest you. GPS allows the cab to be more efficient and give you the best service. So you guys know get the good Portuguese soup. I present to you Mr. Don Ho. Hello everybody. My name Don Ho. So beautiful to see all you beautiful people up there. I would like to, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, what I like to. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to find out we have anybody here that is celebrating a wedding anniversary. Anybody? Anybody? Okay, well then I'm gonna choose somebody. Uh, let's see here. How about the, this couple right over here? Aloha. What's your name, sir? You, you two in the front, the easiest ones to talk to. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not putting here. I don't go away looking in the back over there. What is your name, sir? Ernest. And your name, ma'am? Jane. And now how long have you been married? 64 years. 64 years. <laughs> Well, Uncle Dan might do one beautiful song for you called Kekali Na'au. Kekali Na'au mean my love is as deep as my intestines. It's a beautiful song. Boys, Kekali Na'au. My name is Dan O. So Don. nice to have all of you here. Dan, you were supposed to sing the beautiful Hawaiian wedding song. Nobody told me about no wedding. No, you were just about to sing the Hawaiian wedding song. And, uh, well, you know, you got to tell me these things before the show so I don't look like one damn fool when I come out. <laughs> so where is this couple? Wonderful anniversary couple sitting at the table up front. Right. To the right over there. Yes. Aloha, my name is Dano. What's your name, sir? <laughs> Ernest. And what's your name, ma'am? Jean. It's so nice to, to celebrate with you. How many years you've been married? I think 65 years by now. 65 years. Beautiful. Well, I like to do the beautiful Kekali Ne'au for you, which means my love is as deep as my intestines. Boys. Kekali Na'a This is the morning And it's been waiting for a while I can hear Jean's heart beating Soon earnest bells will be ringing America, America God shed His grace on the and Ground thy good with brotherhood
told many years ago. Oh, hi. Hi, Mei Ling. <laughs> okay, you, uh, Mei Ling, you're going to be Portuguese. So you stand over there, me, one Portuguese lady. Okay, you're going to be Filipino. Okay. And you're going to be Chinese, all right? Here we go. What is your name? Manu. Manu. <laughs> Would you like me to give you a name? Or? And what is your name? Michelle. Michelle. Okay. Chinese, Filipino, Portuguese. Three people stuck on the 17th floor of a burning building. Chinese, Filipino, Portuguese. Honolulu Fire Department raced to the scene. Oh! Oh! Ba -da! Ba -da -da! Oh! I live Makiki on Thurston. I hear that. I hear that at least 15 times a day. Anyway, they get to the scene. They pull out this big round net. They're holding the net. Chinese guy, 17th floor, yelling for help. Help, help. Uh, no, Chinese, they talk fast. So, so you, gotta, you gotta do them real fast. Repeat over and over again like one machine gun. Okay? <laughs> you got it. Hawaiians, come on, Pake, jump. Chinese guy jumped before he hit the net. The Hawaiians pulled the net away. Pake, pack on the ground. <laughs> Hawaiians, that's what you get for changing the prices every two minutes. <laughs> Still holding the net. Filipino guy, 17th floor, yelling for help. Help, help. No, it's help me. Help me. Do you not hear me? Help me. Bye again. Filipino guy, 17th floor, yelling for help. Help me. Help me. Help me. Do you not hear me? Oh, I, come on, book, book, job. Filipino guy jumped before he hit the net. The Hawaiians pulled the net away, book, book, pack. On the ground. Still holding on it, Portuguese lady. Now all you gotta remember is four words. How I scared how. What school you went? High school? Bradford. Bradford, yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Okay, no. Brenda, actually they teach good English over there. How you gotta go Portuguese style. Help, like that. You gotta exaggerate. Use your hands, okay? You make it like how I did the whole show. This thing, just use your hands, express it on your face, and then, then do that real Portuguese pigeon. How? Okay? And it's not I'm scared, it's I scared. S C E D. And then okay? don't forget the arms. And do it slow, not fast, okay? They'd be very exaggerated. Here we go. Portuguese lady, 17th floor, yelling for help. Go! Help! My <laughs> You must be Portuguese. I gave you four words. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I, come on, Pocho, jump! Party make big body, look over the railing, yell back, no way. I saw what you did to the other two guys, no way you're gonna pull the net away from me. Put the net down on the ground. <laughs> How about a big hand piece for Bobo, Kalani, and Maria, and Melanie? This is uh, my final story, and it's about me being Catholic. And during Lent, which is 40 days before Easter Sunday, Catholics give up one thing and do something positive. I gave up peanuts. I love peanuts. And the positive thing is, I would visit the old folks 
in their senior living or they have all different kinds now, you know. Uh, they got the, the kind of homes and they get, I don't know what all the names are, but at any rate, I went, I made a list every Wednesday from Ash Wednesday. And I was halfway through Lent, I had not touched a peanut. And I was on my, my uh, I guess my fourth, my fourth home. And usually they gather into the living room. And I tell 20 minutes of jokes. But this par one particular old folks home, they're all bedridden. So I had to go from room to room to room. I got to the final room. And this, uh, this lady says, D. Lima, tell me one joke. So I did. Okay. And uh, so she was laughing. And while she was laughing, the corner of my eye caught this huge jar of peanuts. The devil was there. I tried not to look. I told her another joke. While she was laughing, I looked at the peanuts. I kept looking at the peanuts. After a while, she says, Dilima, you like peanuts? Help yourself. I said, I cannot. I gave it up for Lent. She said, you come over here. You make us laugh. Forget our pain. Eat the bloody peanuts. God no care. <laughs> I ate three quarters of the jar. <laughs> I told her, you know what, you better eat some before I eat them all. Might as well eat one, eat them all. I go in purgatory anyway. <laughs> she says, oh, no, 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 I cannot have peanuts. I'm allergic from when I was a little girl. I said, what? Then how come you have all these peanuts in your room? She says, oh, my family, they bring chocolate-covered peanuts. I eat the chocolate, I put the peanut in the jar. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see